how you do income students? This is Jacob Clifford. Right now, whether you're in AP class or a college class, let's practice some free response questions. So it's the 2017 Microeconomics free response number one. So right now, go to the College Board website or go to the link below. Try this free response. Do it entirely on your own. It involves perfect competition and drawing a lot of the key graphs. So try it on your own and then stop the video and then start the video back up. I'll go over the answers, okay? Good luck. It starts off by asking you to draw side-by-side -side graphs. Now this is a question they ask a lot, side-by-side uh, -side graphs uh, for perfect competition. So in A, they said side-by-side -side graphs showing the market and the firm. Go and make sure you label those. We've got a market and a firm. We've got a price and a quantity. A uh, price and a quantity market, of course, you know a market graph, demand and supply. This time they're telling you explicitly to label it something. So on the AP test, they do this a lot. Uh, they're asking for price M for the price for the market and QM. Also, make sure to dot, dot, dot over showing that that is a price taker, right? This firm takes that market price. I'm going to add PM even though they didn't tell you what to label it. Uh, but they do ask for a quantity. They will look for quantity F to differentiate between QM and quantity F. So somewhere over here, you're gonna have a quantity. To get it, we've gotta draw first the demand, which equals the marginal revenue, that's Mr. Dar- eh? Then you've got a marginal cost that goes down and up. It looks like this. You produce where MR equals MC down. That gives you the quantity. F means quantity for the firm. Next, we've got to draw an ATC. They said that uh, the firm has zero economic profit to start. So you're gonna go down, ATC is gonna go right here and then back up ATC, that's gonna be the graph that they're looking for. As always with the red pen, I'm gonna show you where the points are. You get one point for drawing. I'm gonna draw it off to the side because we have to draw in this graph actually in B. So one point over here for just drawing this graph at equilibrium, make sure everything's labeled correctly. Another point over here for showing this marginal revenue that it's horizontal and it's a price taker. And then you get another point right here for the quantity for the firm, and then you get one more point for that ATC uh, showing that there's no economic profit currently right now. So that was A, four points, four points, that key graph. Notice it's not all or nothing. So for if you're like not sure what to draw, you're like, I don't even know, draw whatever you know. I mean, even if you just had demand and, uh, you know, just let's say you had a, an X over here labeled with a horizontal demand equals marginal revenue, you'd still get two points. You get half the points and not even have anything close to being done. And that's okay. All right, in B, assume the demand for ethanol increases. On your graph, show what's gonna happen to the following in the short run. So in B, I'm just gonna say C graph. So assume the demand for ethanol increases. That means that people are gonna need more corn because you need corn to produce that ethanol. So the demand is going to shift to the right for the corn. Remember, this is the corn market. We're not analyzing ethanol, we're analyzing corn. Corn's an input to ethanol. We gotta label the price and quantity. They wanted you to label it Q star here, and then over here, dot, dot, over, this is price star. Remember, they told you what to label it, so label it what they tell you every single time. Also, they're asking you to label uh, the new demand, dot, 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 over, this is the price taker, we'll say P star to be consistent, horizontal, Demand equals marginal revenue one. So now the demand has gone up for uh, the firm, which makes sense, right? So demand goes up for the market, demand goes up for the firm. We've got a new quantity. We're gonna do that new quantity right there. Uh, it doesn't ask you to label that something. I'll just label it QF1. And then uh, we've got to draw, it says explicitly draw the uh, area of profit or a loss. So what do we got? Profit or loss. Well, if the price goes up, before we're making no economic profit, and now the price goes up, now you're gonna make some profit. Price down to the ATC, not down to that demand curve, not here, but to here and over. So down to here and over will give you that box of profit. The biggest mistake students made here was that they tried to, because they were in a hurry or something, they, they went all the way back down to the original demand curve. That's not the concept at all, right? So price down to ATC is the area of profit. So here's what the points are. One point for showing that rightward shift over here, all right, so it looks like there was another point for uh, showing the profit. Yeah, you have that, that box of profit, which is right there. So just 
So far, one key graph, one, two, three, four, five, and six points, just by drawing this graph and showing the shift what happens in the short run. Relative to your answer in part B, state what happens to the market price and quantity of corn in the long run. Ha, <laughs> the long run. This was the short run. How do you know? Well, they're making profit. That's not the long run. In the long run, what's gonna happen to the price and the quantity of corn? Well, if there's profit being made, firm's gonna enter, so the price is gonna go down and the quantity is going to go up. In other words, the supply curve, which is right here, is going to shift to the right and putting us back at that original price and that demand right here. So this curve is going to shift over in the long run because firms are going to enter. Now, if you put this, you'd get no point because they're asking you explicitly to explain. Anytime you're on the test, they ask you to explain. Make sure to explain right here. Uh, explain. There it is. So to explain, you got to say uh, because supply is going to increase as firms enter because there's profit, because there's profit. Now, I'm doing some shorthand, obviously, because I'm in a hurry, I wanna draw this graph fast and go over the answers fast. You would write this out. You would say, the supply is gonna increase because firms are gonna enter the market because there's profit being made. That's gonna get you to the point. So, there's another point right there. And uh, notice, it's only one point. You had to explain it, but you only get one point to, you can't, you don't get two points. You don't get, you know, one point for this and one point for that. You get one point total, but you had to explain. Assume that these farmers could produce soybeans instead of corn. So right now the price has gone up for corn. So what's gonna happen to the price of soybeans? Now you could draw a market for this. This would help you out. In fact, I'll draw it off to the side right over here. So if we had soybeans, here's price, here's quantity, here's the demand, here's the supply. It's important to think in graphs. Now I'll say it again, you don't need to draw the graphs to get this point, but your brain should think in graphs at this point. Right? You should understand what's going on. This is soybeans, not corn. This is corn, this is soybeans. When, right, their price has gone up, for uh, the corn. People want more corn because they need it for the ethanol. What's gonna happen to the price of soy? Well, you might say, oh, the demand's gonna shift. It's not gonna be demand. It's not gonna affect people's willingness to buy soybeans. It has everything to do with supply, remember? Because, and it told you, these farmers can also produce these soybeans. So they're gonna supply less of them. Right? Why? Because, well, if I'm gonna make more money off corn, I'm a farmer, I'm gonna make more money off corn, I'm gonna go make corn next season, I'm not gonna produce the soybeans. Supply would shift to the left, and you just read that graph, that graph tells you the price is gonna go up and the quantity is gonna go down for soybeans. So they're asking you, explain, ah. So, if you just wrote this, you wouldn't get the point. You had to explain why, and you have to say something about the supply is going to decrease, and then you'd say something like, because the farmers will produce soybeans instead. I'm just gonna leave it out for now, but there's another point right there. Okay, last one in E, it's asking you to draw another key graph. They're asking this time to draw a binding price ceiling for corn. So you start the whole darn thing over again. And so here it is. We've got the price. We've got the quantity. We've got a downward sloping demand because we're looking at a market. We've got an upward sloping supply, which is right there. Where do ceilings go? I mean, you know, ceilings go below equilibrium, right? It's like the opposite of what you normally think. So right here, and they tell you what to label it. Price C, price ceiling. You, I, you don't want to label that here. I mean, you can write ceiling if you want, but that's what we're looking for. If you want to label equilibrium, you could, but they're not asking for that. They're just saying, okay, where would a price ceiling go with supply and demand for corn? Then it asks you, and that's I, so that's part in I. I'll just write that off to the side. This is uh, EI is the actual graph right there, price ceiling. And then, now by the way, binding means it has an effect. Right? If you put a price ceiling right here, it would not have an effect because when you put a price ceiling above equilibrium, it has no effect in the market. So binding means it had to go below. What's the quantity purchased by consumers in the corn market? The quantity purchased by consumers. Now, you're probably gonna want to put it here. And, and I can see why students be like, oh, you know what, I think consumers are gonna want this. That's the quantity demanded. That's true but that's not how many they're gonna buy. It's kind of a tricky question here. They're not asking how many do they want to buy, they're asking how many will they buy, and how much they will buy, the quantity P for uh, the price ceiling. I'm not sure why they put P, that's kind of dumb. That was the right answer. That's correct, that is EI. And the reason why is that's the actual quantity that's gonna be produced, because that's the quantity supplied. Producers will produce this amount. Sure, people want more because there's the shortage, because the price is really low, but 
if people want this, they're not gonna get it. They can only get this amount. So the quantity purchased by consumers is gonna be here. It's a good question to differentiate between quantity demanded and the actual quantity bought and sold in a market. So a grand total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten points, ten points right now in the comments below. Let me know how you did. So go down there, type in, okay, here's my score. Even if you put out five out of ten, just let me know and it's gonna help me realize what more videos I should make to help you guys. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Take a look at my ultimate review packet. If you got confused on this stuff, take a look at the microeconomics unit three summary. It's got, explains this whole idea of perfect competition. And then unit two goes through this whole idea of supply and demand. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time.